Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Halo Builder. Today I am doing a tutorial on exploration. Uh, before the video starts, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe. I am really hoping to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. If you have, thank you so much, and let's get on with the video. Okay, so this is a more beginner video. I will have another video for more high-end exploration for Omega clones and people who have much more money. This is for beginners or people who haven't done exploration ever. Uh, this is how to start. Now, I already have a, three, a series of three videos on the best fit for exploration. Those are my Blackbird exploration fit videos. I will have a card up in the corner if you're interested in those. I highly recommend that you check them out because I lay out exactly why that fit is the best and how to use it properly. But right now, I am going to just go over the basics of exploration. Exploration is a way to make money in EVE Online where you fly around and you find these abandoned sites which have loot stored in containers that you have to solve a minigame puzzle in order to access. Exploration is rated as one of the most dangerous ways to make money because a lot of the sites are guarded by NPCs and a lot of the non-guarded sites are guarded by players who will kill you and take all your stuff. However, that said, exploration is one of the most rewarding and easiest ways to make money in EVE Online because one single container can hold anywhere between 1 million to 100 million isk worth of loot. So it, if you are willing to take on the risk, it is very rewarding. Now, all of the loot generated is completely luck-based, um, so it's RNG, so you may go for half an hour without with finding only 100k worth of loot, and then in the next like two minutes you may find 300 million worth of loot. It has happened to me before, it's not uncommon, uh, just keep persevering, you will eventually find the good loot. So there are two places in which you can explore and that is normal space and wormhole space wormhole space is the space that you go to when you go through a wormhole and that is the most common place to do exploration in because the loot spawns more frequently the spite the sites are much more plentiful and the loot is more higher value of higher value the normal space the sites will spawn anywhere from high sec to null sec the ones that spawn in null sec will have more valuable loot the ones that spawn in uh, high sec will have la lower quality lower value loot that you will be able to sell however it does you are technically safer because you don't have to go through a wormhole to an unknown space guarded by, let's say, overpowered NPCs. The thing with normal security space is it's very, you have to travel a very long distance to get to Nullsec there. So the Abyssal Filament, there is a normal a humanities version is called of the abyssal filament that you can use to randomly transport you to a system within new eden just randomly pops you into a null sec system that's great if you're going to do exploring in null sec because you're immediately there the problem is getting back to a trade hub where you can sell those things for a normal price and on the way back not only is it going to take you 40 to 70 jumps to get back to a relatively good trade hub it is also very dangerous traveling through nullsec because pretty much every gate is puppy guarded by 
people who want to blow you up to scavenge your remains and take all your loot away from you. So, this is why I personally recommend that you do wormhole exploration over nullsec exploration. However, I will make a nullsec exploration video because it's easier. You don't have to go as far. The loot is worth more and it's technically safer. Okay, so let's get started on what you have to do. So, if you want to explore, you need to have an exploration ship. I personally recommend cruisers uh, for exploration because they have greater shield, greater slots that you can put stuff in, greater cargo capacity, and they're generally not used for exploration, which is good because the people who hunt the explorers are looking for herons and like the Galante's version of a heron to like they're on their scanning probes because what they do is they launch scanning probes and they scan the system for ships and once they see that there's a heron they know immediately that that is an explorer who has loot and they're more likely to go after you because you are in that heron however if they see that you're in a caracal or in a blackbird they're just like okay he's just here better yet if you go into a battleship which is way above what we're doing today but if you want to go into a battleship or battle cruiser they're definitely not going to mess with you because they're like he's here to do the uh, pirate sites that spawn in wormholes so He's probably well equipped with uh, ammunition and weapons, so I'm not even going to touch him. But if you're in a cruiser, you're really inconspicuous because you're not using a ship that is typically used for exploration, which makes people avoid you or just kind of look over you. So I'm going to turn off the cinematic mode and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go look at the ship tech tree so here's the ship tech tree so you can look through all of these ships at your own pleasing but I will tell you right now the heron as you can see it has bonuses to core probes and relic and data analyzers that is because this ship is meant for exploration and then if you go into a mar for example this one also has the same thing so the magnate is a mars version of the heron now these frigates that are meant for exploration yes they do give you bonuses for your scanner probes and your relic and data analyzers but they are very weak and they are known exploration ships so they will be hunted after which is why i recommend to go after a cruiser because a cruiser has much more capabilities than even a destroyer and destroyers are more likely to die so what I would go through is I would go and pick the one that has the m most or the best bonuses that are suited to your skills. So if you're a Kaldari person and you are put a lot of your skill points into missiles, get the Caracal. If you put a lot of your skill points into the Blackbird, get the Blackbird. Now... For Amar, you just go in, and then you just, same thing, you just choose, oh, I'm I'm really good at the medium energy turret, so I'm going to choose the Omen as my exploration ship. Now, I'm not very good in Amar skills, because I am a Kaldari faction player, so I am probably, what I mean is, I would probably not choose the Amar ship in actual space because this is the test server to make sure I just want to make sure that everything goes right but I would probably not go with a ship 
of another faction. So let's say you're Galante, I would not go with a Minmatar ship for your exploration because your skill points are not oriented toward that. However, since we are in the test server and this is a YouTube video and I like how the Omen looks, I am probably going to use this as my explorer ship because why not? So I'm going to purchase this. So the first thing you need to do is purchase yourself a ship of your choosing. If you go for the frigate, just keep in mind that it is pretty weak in terms of armor and defense. So this is our explorer ship for today. Now, if you click Alt F, it's going to bring up the fitting menu in which I'm going to show you how to fit. So we go to equipment and so see how many slots we have here. And then just for comparison, let's see if I have, I do not, I'm going to purchase one quickly. I'm going to get a Heron, which is the Caldari exploration ship. Buy. And another reason you want to use a higher class ship versus a frigate is yes, frigates are cheaper. But they will cost you more in the long run, considering if you keep dying in them, you will have to keep getting new implants and new ships. So it will add up where this is not worth it. Okay, so let's see. Alt, nope, that's Control F. Alt F. Lots less slots. A lot less low slots, a lot less high slots, and a little bit less medium slots for you to use. So completely, basically useless. So now we're going to go and go back into our cruiser. I would not recommend using a destroyer for the same reason as you would use a as you would not use a frigate. Then we look at this guy's fitting and so this one has less medium slots, but it has uh, many more low slots and high slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our regional market and we need a Relic Analyzer. And which is going to be in Ship Equipment. So the difference between 1 and 2. Relic Analyzer 2 is in Omega parts. So you can't use it as an Alpha Clone. Uh, and it just has a stronger virus capability which I will show you. So it basically can break through firewalls more easily. And then we need a data analyzer. Same thing here. The data analyzer 2 is an Omega part. And Alpha clones can't use it. Just more higher powered. Now what we're going to need is we're going to need a cargo scanner. And the reason we need this is because it will it will make exploring a much easier process and it will make it pretty much painless because you won't just be flying around at random now i'll show you what i mean by that later and actually considering how little slots this has i might actually go for a different ship just because yeah also consider the number of medium slots your ship has like, let's see, yes, like the Caracol has a ton more slots at the expense of the bottom slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to open here, go to item hanger. We're going to take the cargo scanner and attach that, attach this, and attach this. Okay, so make sure when you attach the things that it... Uh, that you can have the skill values necessary for them because otherwise you won't be able to use them which is the mistake that I have made here I haven't really used my person very much here on the test server so he's not very well trained so we're just gonna get the tech one stuff instead 
So there's one, and then we get Relic Analyzer. One. Buy this. And then we need a Data Analyzer. One, and then I would definitely recommend getting an Afterburner, just so you can speed up the process of flying around. So we need an Afterburner. And I would get something small. I wouldn't go too big, like 10 MN. I would get something like this. Maybe even something small like the first one. Just to make sure. Okay, and then you want some drones for protection. So I'm going to go with the Vespa. And I'm going to go with the Kaldari Navy Vespa because it is... Uh, in between this tech level 1.5 and alpha clones can have this which is why I highly recommend that you get this drone I get I recommend getting the Navy or the faction drone because it is tech level 1.5 is better than the tech level 1 it's worse than the tech level 2 but as an alpha clone you can't fly the tech level 2 so just get the Navy version because it costs only a little bit more and it would do you so much better Okay, so now that we're here, we take this and we put the normal analyzer on it, and then we're going to unfit this and unfit this, and then we're going to put here, and we still have two, no, one slot, and there we go, and then you always want to make sure you read the warnings, so this says, okay, so this is the 1MN, so let's try the 10MN. And so yeah, this now our thing runs out, but that's fine. And then depending on if you're a a Mars ship or a Kaldari ship or a Galante or a Minmatar, I know for a fact that Amar is armor based and Kaldari is shield based. I haven't really looked into Minmatar and Galante. But if you're in an Amar ship, make sure to get an armor repairer. And if you're in a Kaldari ship, make sure to get a shield booster or a shield hardener i'm going to go with the shield hardener because that is better currently so i'm going to go and find a shield medium oh, hard so you want the multi-spectrum shield hardener one or two if you can get it according to your skill levels so now that we have that we need to think about our low slots so for our low slots we're just going to use probably drone extenders or um, exploration stuff for our rigs because that it is a cruiser that is not meant for exploration what we're gonna want for our rigs is is we're gonna want exploration and then what we're gonna go to is we're gonna go to ship equipment no it's not coming up so there are these rigs so if I go here hauls and fit or no hardware and then you search up get rid of this and then you search up let's see so you do astronautic rigs or no they're in scanning rigs and then medium scanning rigs uh any of these any of these will increase your ability to scan, which is why I'm going to. And you can go through and you can check to see which one is better for you. Increase the effectiveness of the ship's modules. And then we're going to see, and then we're going to do signal focusing kit. That is probably for our core probe launcher. Yep. So, mm-hmm. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go for... For the emission sh sharpener, because what we need is we need to get this, because it will up our chances on our firewalls. 
so it will up our power for the mini game. And then I'm assuming that this is for, okay, yes, get one of these as well, because this will help your core probe scanners. And then again, I will have the fit in the description, but I do highly recommend that you, I have a more in-depth version for my Blackbird fit. And then we're gonna do, I think this is the one for your, uh, yep, data modules. So you want this one as well. Then we're gonna take this and we're gonna buy it. Now, the most important part that you can get for an exploration ship is the thing that lets you explore. So that would be your core probe. That would be your core probe launcher. Uh, I would go for the one because it's more easier to use and the two is just more complicated. And that's complication we don't need at this level. So we're going to purchase this. And then you need probe. Search up probe. And then go into ammunition and then do core scanner probe. And you want to get 16 of these so that it will automatically reload. And then you can just fit your own um, armament to here. Since I am in the test server, I'm not going to do that to waste time. Uh, but if you're in a missile ship, fit missiles to it. So take your Vespas, put them into your drone bay, then attach your rigs like this, and then take this and put it on there. And then, is there anything that I'm missing currently? I don't think, oh yeah, here it is. Okay, and I can't put that on because there's not enough space. Okay, so we have our basic fit ready. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna undock and begin the procedure of scanning. Okay, so now we're gonna do exploration in the real world. What you wanna do is you wanna press Alt M to open the agency menu. Now you click on exploration and then you go to cosmic signatures, which is what we're looking for today. And this is a very useful tool because it will tell you what systems have what cosmic signatures in them. And so I'm going to, this system, Noma, has two cosmic signatures in it. Apparently Garrus does not, so we're going to jump to Noma. Now cosmic signatures are the things that have the wormholes or maybe the normal security space relic data sites. Now while we're jumping, make sure you to load your core and then you want to analyze or organize your system down here. So you want to I like to do it like this, so it's all nice and simple. Okay, so once we have jumped, we will begin the actual scanning process. Alright, so now that we have arrived in a system which has cosmic signatures in it, I would like to do a quick note on the skills you want to do for exploration. So where the thing for exploration is in this menu, as you might guess, is in scanning. And these are all the exploration skills. Archaeology and all of, all of these will all help you. I recommend doing hacking because it gives you 10 plus 10 virus coherence. And then I w would also recommend doing archaeology because of the same thing. These will increase your uh, probe scanner strength, and uh, these are all good. So this is the tab that you want to work on if you're going to do exploration. Just train all of these guys. So like add, add, add. So yeah, these are the things you want to train. These are the skills. 
Okay, now that you have arrived, make sure you have uncloaked uncloaked your ship, and then you press uh, this core probe scanner or launcher so you can launch all the core probes. And then this is why you had 16, so it can automatically reload. You press Alt P. You click on the center of the cosmic signature, and then you bring the box over the middle. Then you double click into empty space, left click, double left click, bring center the box, and make sure this is on 8 for your first scan. Then you click analyze, and it will scan the cosmic signature. Now, the reason you don't want to use or go after high sec, like data sites or relic sites, and then just repeat, click center, center and then lower the uh, AU, the circle. The reason you want to go after data or relic sites that are in high sec is because they uh, have a three minute timer, two to three minute timer on them, which will, uh, after those are done, it will spawn in a pirate fleet, which will insta-kill you. So, I mean, if you want to speed run, you can go ahead and try that. But uh, if you want a more calm, relaxed, definitely go after a wormhole. Alright, so now once you have found your wormhole, you click this button, which recovers your active probes. And then you press and hold, and then you warp within zero. Or you can right click on the wormhole. This is where the real exploration begins. So now once we're gonna warp within it, what you wanna do is you wanna press L to open up locations. And then you wanna open the locations in button and then you wanna do open in new window. And then actually now we're gonna close this for now and now we're gonna go here then we're gonna click enter wormhole. After a little bit, we'll go through the wormhole and we will be in a system with lots of sites to explore. Yes. Now, the first thing you want to do this is very very important the first thing you want to do before you do anything else is you wanna right click save location so you can get back then you wanna do remove in two days or something like that submit then now you pop this out in a new window so now this is your wormhole this is how you get back it's very important now what you do is you press alt p again and look at all of these sites that you can explore so i'm going to fast forward through it because i already explained how you can do that what we're gonna do is we're gonna oh yep we need to uncloak then i'm gonna stand right here right next to it just so we can warp out in any case then we're just going to choose any random any random signature that we like. Let's just start with this one. Then we're going to click this and fast forward. Okay, so now once you have scanned down these things, uh, the data site or the relic site, whatever it may be, you want to recover your probe scanners, and you want to look at the name which the site has. Now, Central Sancha Sparking Transmitter or um, something like or like abandoned. You want to avoid forgotten 
because those are guarded by NPCs. Now, just to make sure, you always want to do warp. If you're unsure of what it is, you want to do warp within 100 meters or kilometers, which for some reason it didn't do. So we're going to... Okay, there we go. Yep. Okay, so... It will give you that pop-up. And then, on the pop-up, it will tell you if it's guarded by NPCs or not. Now, there is this other button that I want to tell you about. I used to call it the D-Scan, but it's actually V. And what it does is you want to do Angle 360. And then, what you do is it scans... It scans the thing around you. It scans the space around you looking for... Uh, people and it will tell you what it finds as you can see it finds nothing but if it sees a ship or like what you're really looking for is combat scanner probes uh, those means you're currently actively being hunted so I would get out of there as fast as possible so you click V it scans and if you see combat scanner probes you're screwed get out of there as fast as possible okay so now this is where the cargo scanner comes in handy by the way you want to press shift F to launch your drones and then they're just gonna orbit you and they're gonna protect you so what you're gonna do is you're gonna control this is another reason why you should get a cruiser is because their locking range is very far now you click on your cargo scanner and it's gonna cycle through and it's gonna tell you what it has you see it will tell you uh, what is in it and how much it's worth. Now, because I'm on the uh, test server, all the things are worth zero. But on the normal tranquility, it will tell you, like, this is worth 100k and this is worth 20 million. So this is a very important tool to have. So, like, yeah, 100 isk worth so like carbon and so not really worth much and then we're gonna scroll until we find the other ones okay and then we're gonna fly towards them and we're gonna turn on our afterburner so we can fly towards them faster and then we're just gonna see and so that you yeah you just go around you just go around scanning to see what happens okay so we're gonna actually approach this one because it's closer and I want to show you guys how to actually hack the system so yeah just once you arrive just lock target on everything and then just go around just scanning see if it has anything worthy in it if not this is the reason why I highly recommend that you have a cargo scanner because Otherwise, you'd just be flying around to all of them, and then the ones that have, like, one carbon in it, and it's worth nothing, like this. This is worth literally nothing. You would go, and you would waste time and to get it, and then you just get that, and you'd be like, oh, what a waste of time. With this, however, you can pick and choose which ones, oh, this one has 20 million, I'm going to go do that one. So, once you have arrived in at the relic that you have chosen or the data that you have chosen you want to get within 5,000 meters of the site because that is the range of these analyzers so you click on the data analyzer because it's a data site and then you this is, you get the mini game so the core which is what you're looking for should be in one of these complete hexagons that is farthest away from you so it's probably going to be here here or here although this is not a complete hexagon what these numbers mean is that you're that many clicks away from something important so that is a firewall and blocks you from going any further this is a virus you want to kill it immediately You kill it now by killing things it drains your um, virus coherence and this is how the virus strength okay 
that's a data cache. Uh, it has either a helpful tool inside of it or something like another virus. Okay, so that is a... So this is a helpful thing. This is a tool. When you use it, it helps you by killing the thing. And then we're going to keep going over here. See if there's anything interesting. So this is a repair tool. It will repair your... Um, ability to fight the viruses okay there's another one we're gonna click use it again I'm gonna see two two okay I'm just gonna click kill this one see if there's anything left okay and this is the core see farthest away sort of complete uh, hexagon so then you just click on this a bunch until it dies and then you get system hack successful and then what you can do is you can open cargo and then you can click loot all and that will put it into your cargo so if you fail two system hacks the thing will blow up so you want to make sure that you will not fail it in two because otherwise you will lose all the loot so now we're gonna press shift R and now you're gonna press L to open the locations tab and now you're gonna come here and then you're gonna go warp to location within zero alright so that is the end of my tutorial all this loot that you found you can sell at like Gita trade hub or your local trading station Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, uh, I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you could do that, that would be very good. Uh, for those of you who have already subscribed, thank you so much. Um, but if you keep commenting, telling me what you want to see, what I can improve upon, I always like those comments. But again, subscribe and have a great rest of your day.